Hey there, welcome back. This is Andrew, and today we're going to be continuing our chess series with the drag events for our pieces, as well as laying the groundwork for our pathfinding. And this video is going to be pretty short. We're actually not going to need to go into Unity at all. We're just going to be sitting within the base piece class. So let's go ahead and hop into Visual Studio so we can go ahead and get started. So here we are in the base piece class. And since last time we've added two variables, one being a vector three int that we're calling movement and we are initializing to vector three int dot one. Now this is a data type that was added, I think within Unity 2017. So if you don't have this, make sure you're updating so you can get this data type. And then we're going to be making a list of cells that we're going to be calling highlighted cells. And this is going to be a list that's going to contain all of the cells that are available for our piece to move to. And if you remember in the last video, we created these two functions set up in place. So we're going to go ahead and skip over those and move down to this movement region. And the first function within this region that we're going to look at is the create cell path, where we're passing in a couple, well, we're actually passing in three integers, where we have one for the X direction, the Y direction, and the movement. Now, this is essentially going to take care of all of the vertical and horizontal movement, as well as the diagonal. And right now, since our movement is basically one, we're only going to be able to move in a one space circumference, I guess circumference, <laughs> I guess that's probably not right, is will be the perimeter of the piece that we're going to be using. So the first thing here, we have a couple of integers, current X and current Y, where we're storing the current cell of the board piece that we are clicking on. We're then adding to that position in the for loop below this, where we have that movement variable and we're basically counting out from that original cell location. And we're taking the current position of our piece and we're adding our X direction and our Y direction. And how far we're gonna be able to go in either of those directions is gonna be dictated by our movement. And this is so pieces like the queen that move seven spaces or basically the entire board or the king that can only move one space we can, use, we can reuse this for both of those situations. Now we're gonna get the current cell of the piece and we're gonna access the board through that. And we're gonna get all of the cells of the board and pass in those two new coordinates that we just created. And we're gonna get that cell from the board and we're gonna add it to our highlighted cells list that we created at the top of the script. And this function is primarily being called by the one right below it called check pathing. So let's go down there and take a look at that. Now, this is probably the ugliest piece of code within the entire project because I wanted to use a for loop and I had different ways of writing this out without continuously making more or less a very similar call to the same function. However, this was the most straightforward, so I decided to go with it. Now, that first function may make a little bit more sense now because we're making a call to the create cell path function where we're giving it a one, a zero, as well as the X value of that vector three end at the top of the script. And in this case, we're going to be moving in the X direction and we won't be moving in the Y direction, but we will be moving in the X direction based on that X value. So basically we're using that vector three movement to hold all of the values for how that piece is going to move. So for the X, it would be horizontal for the Y it would be vertical and for the Z, it would be diagonal. And depending upon what kind of value we put in that, whether it's a, a one, a zero or a negative one that can dictate which direction that path is going or if it's even available or not because if we pass in a zero we're not going to be able to count out any of those cells and add it to that highlighted cells list and that's basically what we're doing here with all of these lines and then moving on down to show cells this is basically where we're going to go through that entire list of highlighted cells and turn on that outline image and if you remember it's the image that was childed to the cell that had a bit of a an outline sprite attached to it and then right below that, we basically have the opposite function where we're going to be clearing the cells. So we're first going to be disabling all of the outline images, and then we're going to be clearing that list of highlighted cells. And that about does it for the backend functionality that we're going to be creating in this script. Now we're going to see how we're calling it and all of these events. And if you remember, we are inheriting from the event trigger class within this base piece. So we have access to the on begin drag, on drag, and on end drag events, where we're gonna be able to get pointer event data that's going to be very useful for controlling the piece on the board. And first we're gonna take a look at on begin drag, where we're gonna be making a call to that check pathing function as well as show cells. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be first getting all of those highlighted cells, and then we're just gonna be displaying them to the player. 
And for on drag, there isn't a whole lot going on. We are just setting the position of the piece that we're interacting with to the position of the cursor. And we're getting that through the event data. So we're not having to mess with the cursor and screen space and all that stuff. But once the interaction has ended, we are going to be automatically calling on and drag. And what that's going to do, it's going to clear the cells. So once we pick up a piece, move it around the screen for a bit, and then in the interaction, we're going to be calling on and drag. So that's going to basically signal that, hey, we're done with this piece. And that about does it for the programming. If you go back into Unity, and hit play and then click and hold and drag on one of your pieces it's going to follow your cursor as well as show a perimeter of activated cells around it and in the next video we're going to flesh this out even more so our pieces can interact with the cells on the board and snap to their position and that about does it for this video if you enjoyed it please feel free to leave a like and if you'd like to continue to follow along feel free to subscribe and i'll see you next time